It's all pieces of microplastic. You found it at the surface, you found it in subsurface waters, in deep sea sediments, sea ice in the Arctic. You're finding them in really tiny organisms called zooplankton. You're finding them in fishes that people eat. They're seemingly present everywhere. So, so it wasn't so that it was in the stomach, it was all filled up the whole room. There's no need to use microplastics in these kinds of, of products. There are already alternative materials, natural materials. At the moment, there is no regulation for microplastic pollution in Ireland. Nobody thought this through. To Ireland's credit, we were the first country on a plastic ban ecotax. On the other hand, the deposit on return for drinks containers, um, no matter how hard you lobby, you just cannot get uh, that in. We're in the Leary Harbour at the moment. One of the seals here has a really tight necklace, which is cutting into it. There he is. You see, that's him with a strap around his neck. The fishermen were trying to catch him to get that off, but I'd say it would be very difficult. And that's a really obvious bit of litter doing damage. You have some areas which, for example, in Galway Bay, the locals call it the shredder. So as the waves push the big rubbish down the funnel, it gets bounced, 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 and it gets made into smaller pieces. And in those areas, you can no longer, for example, take seaweed, because the seaweed is totally embalmed with little bits of plastic. The problem is basically when these big plastics are released into the oceans, they break down into smaller particles um, called microplastics, plastic particles that are less than five millimeters in diameter. They can be mistaken for food and we're only beginning to understand the biological consequences of that. Microbeads are small pieces of plastic that are deliberately added to uh, exfoliating products, um, but then end up being washed down the drain and polluting our environment. We know that they're in the human food chain because they're in fish. We know that plastics uh, contain uh, endocrine disruptors, uh, which can be carcinogenic. So yeah, this is really of concern. In Ireland, we had about 120 birds. 27% of them had plastics in their stomach. We had 16 species and 12 of these species had plastics in their stomach. I have two examples here. This is a northern fulmar that was found in County Kerry. And this is a, an Atlantic puffin that was also found in County Kerry. So this is from one single bird that had all these little bits of plastic. Some of them are, they ingest so much plastics that you know that they actually had no space for real food. There's no nutrition in plastics, so they may die from starvation. We had a juvenile Ganesh that had this whole piece inside um, it wasn't in the stomach, it was actually here because it couldn't swallow the whole thing. The bird actually choked. It was probably just learning how to feed on its own and it got confused and ingested this. Each time you wash your clothing, like on average, 2,000 particles, microplastic particles, are released into your, you know, your wastewater. 90% of microplastics channeled through the wastewater treatment system is ending up in the sewage sludge and 10% is still going back out in our treated 
water, which then goes back into our rivers and our lakes. The fate of the sludge in Ireland, uh, most of it is land spread. We actually apply our sewage sludge uh, mostly to agricultural land in Ireland for, for tillage. And we don't know or understand what happens to it after that. Does it remain there? Or is it transported into nearby freshwater systems after, let's say, a heavy rain? Leakage that's coming from industry is not intervened. The most stringent policies would still allow the emission of microplastics because they're just not measured. Waste collection used to be free in Ireland. And when the fee was uh, introduced, people said, I'm not going to pay a fee. And they were starting to throw things all over the place. In the last two or three years, fly tipping has really started increasing again. And people are doing it quite blatantly. And it's very hard for local authority uh, litter wardens to try and keep up with that. Responsibility or um, a plan should come from consumer responsibility, consumer awareness, but hopefully in time it will also come from legislation on the industry side.